tonight. From GEHA Field at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. It's Sunday Night Football on EA Sports. We'll see Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs taking on Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It is perhaps the best home field advantage in all of football and certainly the loudest as we welcome you to GEHA Field at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. The scene just a few moments ago, predictably loud and raucous here at Arrowhead as their beloved Chiefs took field and they are set to match up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. First try on offense for the Bucs and their veteran quarterback, Tom Brady. And if you go by the numbers, he's had a Pro Bowl-type season. And maybe that's even selling him a little bit short. He's the NFL leader in touchdown passes to this point in the year. And with the end of the season not too far away, he's got his guys playing at a very high level. A first carry for Leonard Fournette. And he's going to get forward for about five, but that may be coming back. What say you, Mr. Referee? Oh. Ali Marpet, the guard, caught there. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Brady now to throw. A pass underneath for Fournette. Call it a gain of 12, but of course not a first down due to the previous penalty. Second down and eight. On the ground, this is Leonard Fournette. He was well over 100 yards last week. He told us this week, a little ambitious, that he wants to hit that 200 mark. We'll see. Makes sense, though, doesn't it? Have we ever run into a running back that had a great game the week before that didn't think that's just going to naturally continue, just make sure you feed me the football? And that's what they're all about. Continuity, rhythm, number of carries. Just keep giving it to him. Here's Ronald Jones, first carry for the USC man. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Working from the gun, it's Brady. Airing this one out for Evans. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. Tyreek Hill back deep for Kansas City. Fair catch called for in May, but now we'll have to see about the penalty. That was pretty obvious. He didn't let him catch it. Agreed, and what's hard is you make that long run downfield to try and cover it, but you got to locate the football as well. A shotgun snap and a give to Edwards Alaire. Uh, he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. The numbers for him from a week ago, 15 carries, 61 yards. He's been a huge part of their winning streak because he establishes not just an identity and a tone, but the team relies on him. He takes care of the football, he gains yardage for him, chews up clock, and that's been a big part of why they're winning games lately. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, with that... And yeah, this is taken in at the five. And all the way in for a can 
Kansas City touchdown. Tyreek Hill hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Chiefs are going to take a first quarter lead. Well, they had gone run the previous play. Nice little setup. This time they go play action. Defense bites a bit, and they hit for a big play in the end zone. So they sold it really well, didn't they? Because of just what you described, they ran it the previous play, come back with the same action, and now they step back and throw it and get a big play for a touchdown. But what happens as a defensive back is your eyes have to go to the right place. You always hear Coach talk about, are your eyes in the right spot? Well, this time the eyes went to the play action. It froze their feet. They weren't moving, and he went on past him and caught the pass for a touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker done to kick it away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And this game, CD, some are calling it the game of the year. Others are saying, hey, this is the Super Bowl preview. And as we speak, these are the top seeds in each conference. How do you think these two teams approach this one internally? And I think that we both subscribe to the theory that it is the game of the year so far, and it could be a Super Bowl preview. I know outwardly both teams are going to tell us, hey, it's one of 16. We're going to do what we do. Let's we'll just go ahead and play our game. But I think we both know that internally, they're saying we've got to establish we're the team to beat in case we see them again. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. Well, they're currently the best in the NFL in converting on third down, so it was no surprise there that they picked that one up. And they've done it in many different ways throughout the season, Charles. Picking it up, running it, throwing it, just effective on third downs all year long. And able to get this one all the way up to about the 46-yard line. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. Now the toss to Jones. Running right. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. To throw, it's Brady. He's got it complete to Gronkowski. And he is going to have a box first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. So now first and ten in Chiefs territory at the 47. Now Brady. Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Looking to throw again on second down. Brady flush to his right. And he'll just get rid of it. This defense for the Chiefs, they were very solid last week in the victory over Baltimore. And no matter what's done throughout a ball game, it always comes back to blocking and tackling. That's the essence of football. But I think it's hard for people to understand just how difficult it is to tackle, especially open field. Very few missed tackles on tape that I saw last game. This team does a nice job of getting their opponents on the ground. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. And they'll keep on the ground with Jones. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. The first drive this unit had, they punted. This drive, much more polished, just looking crisper, aren't they, moving the ball? Maybe the first drive was a little bit of a wake-up call. Probably a little bit angry that they had to punt the ball away the first time they had it. Got motivated, got to the sideline, said, OK, let's not let that happen here as we take over again. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. Brady. Eluding the pressure right. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Scotty Miller, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Buccaneers are an extra point away from tying up this football game. He was able to move around and found some vision to throw the football. And how about how he ended it? Boy, he had some zip on that throw. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to have an arm like that. Results in the touchdown here. Great play offensively. Extra point up and good by Suckham. And that will tie our score here in this opening quarter of play. 
So that drive 12 plays in length. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. The Chiefs offense about set to begin this drive. And they come into this one riding that nice long win streak. And remember, next weekend is an open week for them. So that if they can get the win here, a lot of momentum into that time off. It certainly is. And if you're wondering if anybody's saying, boy, this is coming at a bad time, we want to keep playing. The answer can be yes, because when teams are on a hot streak, they want to keep going. But what the veterans are telling the young guys in the locker room, an open week is always good, guys. Take it, and let's go with it. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. Edwards Alaire, they'll try to run for it. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up fourth. They had the eight-yard gain on first down, but unable to do much from there. They had three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. On is the punter Townsend as he gets this one away. Beckham the return. Now a hit and a loose football. And it's picked up by the Chiefs. Taking it right down Broadway. And he has brought this one back. A fumble recovery for a Chiefs touchdown. If you didn't know it, it won't surprise you to find out that this team leads the league in scoring. They've been a quick strike team all season long. There's another example. They did it again. This offensive coordinator, right now you can write his ticket towards being a head coach. He's advanced in the ways of offense. Butker now to add the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. This will be fielded inside the five. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. And here's Jones again on second down. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Now a first down carry by Jones, and he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. 46 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. A good gain on first, has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense? Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. The Bucks on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This will be third and five on play action. Now Brady. Open man is Godwood. It's complete. Yeah, they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. Brady gives this one off to Jones. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. 
When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. The throw on second down by Brady is incomplete. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out high. They expected it and got there and popped it free. And he's able to find Miller. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Now Brady. And he hauls it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. Odell Beckham, his second touchdown on the season. And the Buccaneers are an extra point away from tying up this football game. A lot of people might call this backyard football. Sometimes just understanding who you've got out wide and who you're going to throw it to. Give him an opportunity to go up and make a play, even when contested. Looks like that one worked out pretty well. The trust factor, in effect. Extra point put through by Suckham, and we are tied here in the second quarter. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. The KC offense out of the huddle, ready for their next drive. They're sitting in first place in the division. They've got an open date on the calendar coming up next week. So, Charles, you and I were talking about this before the game. This one for them kind of has some extra importance. It certainly does because if they can get the win here and pad their lead a bit or at least keep pace, then they can really kick their feet up and say a job well done at this point and not have to worry about ball at all until they're back in their facility, back in their meeting room, getting ready for the next game. From the 27, Mahomes. And this would take it in on the right sideline, but not in the field. I believe they buzzed down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Now well, here's the call. After the the play, the one on the field is reversed. So that challenge is successful one. On first down, Mahomes. He's going to try and go deep again. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. And all the way in for a Kansas City touchdown. A great effort there. With a lucky number 13 touchdowns now on the year. And the Chiefs have broken our tie as they take the lead. for the PAT. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. Scoring summary, three-play drive, and it's capped off with a Kansas City touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. Taken in at the three. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. They'll look for a drive to tie this up, down 21-14 as they have it first and 10. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. So following the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 25. To throw is Brady. Looks for Beckham again. This time he finds him. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. From the gun on third down, Brady escaping the pressure right. Open man, Gronkowski complete. 
And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. He's got the hookup to Miller. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. Give him nine there on the first down completion. When you see zone defense and you know you get a drag route on as your primary call, you got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over at that time, and it's going to lead to third down. He was trying to go back to Beckham there, and it's third and short. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. So they'll say no to the 50-yard field goal try. Instead, the offense out there, they're going for it. Over the middle, he finds Godwin complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. First down now, but that clock rolling. Into the red zone, it's Brady. Flushed out right. That's caught by Sims. And the Buccaneers are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. Again, they'll throw with Brady. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off inside the five, and he will be brought down on what will be the final play of this first half. So we've come upon halftime here in KC with the Chiefs on top. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in a minute. But first, time to give the folks at home a look at what's going on around the NFL. We'll get started up at Lincoln Financial Field in Philly where you see the final score there. Jalen Hurts leading the way in the victory with three touchdown passes. From there, we head up to MetLife Stadium to check on the Jets. And they were losers in that one to the visiting Pittsburgh Steelers. Juju Smith-Schuster leading the way with three touchdown catches. And then lastly, we wrap up the week with a good one on Monday Night Football between the New England Patriots and the Tennessee Titans. Meanwhile, in our game, no shortage of offense as each team has been able to move the ball effectively. Will the defenses show up in the second half? To find out, we give it back to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Ready for the start of the third quarter. The Chiefs have the lead and set to receive the football. And we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. But the Chiefs ready to go on offense to begin quarter number three. And Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought the first half, they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They have oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And all the way. Kansas City touchdown. Tyreek Hill with touchdown number two in the game and now 11 on the year. And the Chiefs come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter. Extra point by Bucker is on target and the lead now up to 14. Now after the touchdown, here's Bucker on to kick it away. This will be fielded inside the five. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in. You can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially, but you have to do it without pressing, because pressing, that'll lead you into bigger errors. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, and hey, he's gonna make a play for me. I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. 
An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Brady going to throw. Flush to his right. It's complete. He's got Gronk. And he's down right around midfield after a gain of two, maybe three. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From midfield, here's Brady. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there. Touchdown! Complete at the one. Scotty Miller, his second touchdown of the night. And the Bucs are able to make this a close game again. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. And now Coach Bruce Arians has made the call. His guys will go for two. Brady's going to look to throw. And he will get into the end zone, and the two-point conversion will cut this down to a six-point game. He hits the big target for the two-point try. Defenses hate those guys, especially around the goal line. It's hard to decide who you're going to put on him. Are you going to put a smaller corner on him? Are you going to put a safety who doesn't have maybe the same coverage skills? How about a linebacker? He may have the size, but he's not used to really covering in space. That's why the tight end gives you such a great advantage when you're throwing the football. The Chiefs offense about set to begin this drive. The drive will begin with a run by Edwards Hilaire. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. They go play action. Now Mahomes. That one complete to Hill. Oh, and now some space to operate. He's got daylight. And he will take it on in for a Chiefs touchdown. Tyreek Hill, 74 yards. And the Chiefs are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. That's a pretty quick response to that last touchdown drive. And it seemed like they had maybe given up momentum. Well, not so fast. No, not at all, because they end up pushing the lead up once again. And you're exactly right. Thought momentum might have been shifting. Instead, they grabbed old Mo, didn't let him get to the opposite sideline. Now Mahomes to the line as the Chiefs are going to go for the two-point try. And here's Edwards aware that he will get into the end zone to extend the lead by two more. So they kept it on the ground, got it into the end zone. And Charles, sometimes you probably see teams treat the two-point conversion differently than if it was first and goal from the two, or I should say third and goal from the two. I agree with you totally on that. A lot of teams treat it as if they have farther to go and shy away from running the football. I think this is a great spot to do it because most teams play it for the pass. Go ahead and run and let your linemen surge and fire out. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two-minute. Who knows? Let's see what they decide to do. That turns into a very well-orchestrated play right there. Going to work his way out of the backfield to the right, and after he looked it in, he found plenty of space to roll and picked up big yardage. Now he dumps this off over the middle. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. They're going to hurry back to the line now. 
He's going to look for Beckham in the end zone. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked up by Legereus Sneed. And the Chiefs are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. So the deep ball giveth, and now the deep ball taketh away. And you get deep on me here. I like that. Going to the next level and what you're thinking. And when you think about all the success he's had throwing the football so far, sometimes when you're doing that, you think you're invincible out there. But he was given a cold dose of reality on that throw. The KC offense out of the huddle, ready for their next drive. They are clicking on all cylinders. They seem to be just scoring at will right now, and that's why they've opened up this big lead. Now we always talk about getting into the zone, and all athletes are seeking that, aren't they? Where everything is working for them, every move they make works, it clicks, and they are on point right now. Yeah, they are in that zone that you're talking about. Meanwhile, Mahomes' throw caught by his receiver, Hill. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Throwing on first down is Mahomes. It's Kelsey on the ground. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. On second down, a run with Edwards Alaire. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. On third down, here's Edwards Alaire. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth. Just a simple run play there on third and one, but this D was up to the challenge and stopped him, bringing up fourth down. Here's the Chiefs punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this one's going toward the sideline. They'll try to play keep away from Beckham. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any off. A leap, and he's got it. He got it. And he finally is out of bounds, but he's down inside the 20-yard line. Now the red challenge flag makes an appearance as Andy Reid wants a second opinion. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. And Brady's throw there incomplete. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going... And oh, it'll be intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And the Chiefs are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. Well, that's three picks he's now thrown in this game. And I know this, the holiday season, because oh, here we are in December. Giving. Right, it is the season of giving. Maybe for his own sake, after the game, he may have to announce that he's donating certain amounts to charity for each interception that he threw. The Chiefs offense about set to begin this drive. And they've got the lead here getting late into the third quarter. And the passing game for them, it's been terrific. We've seen that. But the rushing game, almost non-existent. And with the lead and trying to... And this is caught right along the sideline. What a job of keeping the toes in bounds there. A big play there for KC. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. On 
first and ten. Here's Mahomes. Open man is Hill. He's got it. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. There's a first and ten at the 14-yard line. Shotgun snap to Mahomes. And he's got Hardman in the end zone. Touchdown, Kansas City. Nicole Hardman, his third touchdown now on the year. So they call. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is down the numbers. There he goes. The 40. Past the 20. And he takes it the distance across the goal line for two points. So after the block PAT, they're ready to kick this one off. And here comes a return from a few steps into the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. And they were ultra confident coming in, that's for sure. They had won seven straight, but number eight not looking to be in the cards right now. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw, eluding the pressure right. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. Well, I kind of got to give him credit. Another incompletion there, yes, but he's still trying to make plays outside the pocket. Yeah, he's been hemmed in for much of the game. How about him getting outside there? And that's what you want to see from your quarterback. He's not giving up on this game, so every other player in the field has to say to himself, I can't give up either. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. And now they're in the hurry up. On first down, Brady. And this one's incomplete. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. On second and ten, Brady escaping the pressure right. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked off right around the 43. solid game-changing play for this defense for the interception. At this point, though, I don't know that it's game-changing. I mean, they've got this one in firm control. And you always hear about, you know, those stories about someone left their game plan behind and maybe you benefit from it. I'm not going to say that that happened, but they certainly have appeared on defense to be a step ahead this entire game. Guys are always in the right spot in order to make a play. The offense has had its moments, too. So after the INT, here's Mahomes. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. From the five, here's second and two. Mahomes now to throw. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. To throw, it's Mahomes. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. The safety blitz staged to perfection that time as they sack him for a loss of six. Butker's kick here is good. And that will stretch the lead up to three touchdowns now. It's a 21-point game. Well, he was a spectator for much of this game. This is his first field goal opportunity of the entire contest, but he's able to connect. Yeah, he had a pretty good seat to this one, didn't he? But let's face it, all kickers that you and I know, they want to contribute. They want their opportunity, and he seized his. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. 
They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. And they're going to speed things up here. Throwing on first down is Brady. And my goodness, another interception. Picked off by the Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew. And they will finally get him down as he's all the way to the 36-yard line. Interception woes, they just continue to mount. He's thrown five picks. At this point, you got to be thinking, is it something between the ears? I think a confidence hit does occur once you start getting those numbers up there a little bit. But as you and I both know, it's not always just one guy's fault. Maybe somebody ran the wrong pattern. Maybe some balls were tipped. It could be so many different things. Bottom line, though, it comes back to the guy throwing them. Off the option, it's Edwards Alaire. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop it behind the line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. On play action, it's Mahomes. Blitz coming and down he goes. Shaquille Barrett, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. After the sack, things get a little tougher here. Third and long for Mahomes and the Chiefs. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. Bunker's kick here is good. And that will extend the lead out to 24. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Again, we see Tom Brady and the Bucs set to take over. And that interception that ended their previous drive likely also ended any shot they had at victory. Yeah, long road back from here, no doubt about that one. But let's face it, if you're going to go out there and compete, you want to try and end on a strong note, don't you? Absolutely. It won't end in a victory, like you said, but they can maybe take something positive out of this one. To throw once more on second and ten. Trask, a quick pass here to Godwin. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. And quickly, they get to the line. Trash throw on target to Godwin here. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. So now first and 10 in Chiefs territory at the 42-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Now Trask. Looking for Gronkowski, and it's intercepted. Picked off near the 34. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. Mahomes will lead the Chiefs up first and 10 at their 38. Here's Edwards and Lair as they will start on the ground. Dante Fowler in on the stop. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Chiefs in possession of the ball as we welcome you back. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. And he'll take this up over the 40 to about the 41. can only get this to the 42-yard line, and that is not near enough. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. 
So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Looking up to the lights, and he muffs it. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. I know there's no magnet in the ball, but sometimes for the punt returner, after such a scramble, it sort of feels that way, doesn't it? He has it, he loses it, somehow the ball finds his way back to him. A tone for his sin, and you know he's taking a deep sigh of relief right now. Trash throw taken in by Miller. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. Flushed out right. Caught on the right side by Jones. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. So three plays, already first and goal, and they are wasting little time. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. So first down went in the wrong direction. They're at the 13-yard line. Here's second and goal. Setting to throw. Here's Trask. And that is incomplete. Seven seconds remaining. Now the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. A big offensive explosion help leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So for the Chiefs, the win moves them to 12 and 1 now on the year. And they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for Tampa Bay, this could hurt in the race for home field advantage as they drop to 10 and 2 on the year. And they'll try to rebound next week as they head to Heinz Field to take on.